Hey guys, Beta coming at you, and this time we're taking a look at a uh, rather unique piece of Takara history here. Back in the late, uh, very late 90s, early 2000s, Takara decided to take the Brave series model and give it another go with, uh, with a series called Web Diver. This is the, this is the he main hero robot from Web Diver, Gradion. And the way Web Diver worked was, as you, as Takara in the Brave series demonstrates, the only thing that can protect the universe and the Earth are a group of heroic elementary school students. And in this case, this is the this is a series of well, the robots have sort of a personality, but they really meld with the children in order to become a fighting robot for good and justice. And that's where, that was the theory for most of uh, Web Diver's stuff. Uh, especially the bigger robots were melding with children, while the smaller robots were AIs. Now, the smaller robots could merge with Web Diver in, in his robot form, and his, but his uh, vehicle form is that of a rather futuristic train that he would travel the, uh, the internet with. All of the, all, it's all plastic. Um, these bits are just uh, chrome-plated plastic. There's no, very little metal on the figure, but the train wheels do work, and they actually do a nice little choo-choo motion there. And as a train, it works really well. I actually really like the train. Uh, I think it's a good-looking train. It's very neat to see the steam stack or the steam engine concept, give it a little bit of a more futuristic update. I always, I think steam trains are pretty cool, but hey. Uh, now, this guy did have an op a specific way to play with it, in that you would plug this guy into your TV. There is an output, there is a port here that is a green audio port that would actually split into RCA cables. And you could plug it in, and using software built in somewhere, I think into the figure itself, you could play a game using the controllers up here and this big button here. I've never been able to get that to work. I think because Japan uses uh, PAL. No, I don't think they use PAL. Well, anyway, I've never been able to get it to work. And I've thrown batteries in this guy, and it just didn't work. But, you know what, I don't care. I don't want to play some crappy isometric 2D game from a toy. I, I'm happy with the $20 I spent on him as a figure, not as a video game system. So, in this mode, he really doesn't have much options other than moving that up or any other real interesting features. The one thing to note is he does have another accessory that fits down into the smokestack here that is the sword. I could not find it in the box that I found this guy in at my parents place but he does come with another accessory that I am currently missing. I know I have it I just don't know where it is. So let's go ahead and get him transformed. First thing we're going to do is actually push this button in here and that will free up that section to lift up. And then we come over here grab these sides and kind of unpeg them from the bumper of the front of the steam and tank. This whole section will be lifts up, you fold those parts in, flip this around, fold this all the way around, and flip this out and you get your prerequisite shield. Because of course, if he's got a sword, he's got to have a shield. So, how does the rest of the figure work? Well, it's once that's removed, it's actually really, really easy. So we're going to start by taking the train treads and actually unclipping them and folding them down. And these will fold straight back once you then slide, you know, fold them down, slide them over. Well, you can't do it yet, but all right. So those are folded down there and then you unfold those. Once you do that, you fold these guys right up there, 
and swing these down and lock into place and then fold out the robot feet. So we'll do that again over here. And there we go. And we'll just straighten these out to form legs and fold those out to form side skirts. And we'll take the whole section and spin it around. Take this whole top section and bring it down. And the camera is pretty far away. So we'll just move the camera up. And please ignore the sirens you hear outside. Next we'll take this whole section, open it up like that. Bring the head down. Fold in the arms. These will peg into place. Rotate the arms. Slide the hands out. And same thing over here. Now for the face reveal, we are going to actually take this part and lift it straight up. And that will snap back here and reveal the robot face. And as you can see, little robot face. There we go, that's better. So just close the face back up. That's his battle mask. And when he merges with a child, he gets that face. And when he merges with anything else in the toy line, he goes back to that. So th in this form, this is the way in this form he's supposed to, I guess, use the TV function. There's a sensor right here, and there's another uh, sensor here that will actually, it's an IR sensor. And the way you would do it, according to the directions, is you actually stand here and do it like this. You play the game like this, which, even if I got it working, I don't want it. All right, so in the robot form, there are some issues. Uh, one, he's pretty darn floppy. If you move the knees up, these pop out a little bit. Sliding that is much too easy. Now, getting the second hand, I expected a few issues. Plus, the shoulders don't. The shoulder pads don't stay up all the time. Posability wise, it's actually very posable. So, no real issues there. Head turns this way, no up or down movement. But if you deploy the face, you can't move the head at all, unfortunately. Hands are on, fingers are on a single joint, thumb is on a single joint. It can hold this but not very well, it just kind of dangles there. So, I mean, there's no real point to that. But all in all, he's not too bad. Now, a lot of the other smaller figures, a bunch of the cheaper figures, and even some of the more expensive figures, all have a different way to combine with him. They either form a backpack, or most of them form guns. Uh, there is a, a ship that forms a dragon, a truck, like a flatbed truck that forms a dragon, and a drilling machine that forms another giant robot that's a headmaster. I'm not making that up. I wish I was. But anyway, um, WebDiver and its successor, uh, Die Gunder, never caught on. Never caught on at all. Uh, they were gone within a year, and I remember there being sales like crazy to try and get rid of this stuff. I kind of wish I could find some of the stuff nowadays. I have the blue truck that turns into a dragon and the weird drill machine. I got all of them off eBay for like 20 bucks, but I haven't been able to find anything since. He's a nice looking figure, I'm not gonna lie. I like the look of it. I Just the functionality really isn't there and he doesn't look good without the sword, but you know what? I'm going to have to say pass on it because unless you find him for like five, ten bucks, I wouldn't bother with him. I mean, he's okay. I, 
I got him in a lot for 20. If you get him in a lot for 20, it's pretty good, but just as a single robot, eh, it's only okay.